According to the commandments and doctrines of men, these things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility. They neglect the body, but they're no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Paul just told you, it'll make you look real religious, but it won't change your life. And that was what exhausted this guy. Okay? I was real religious, but it wasn't changing my life. In fact... I was always looking for victory. I sat here tonight and I thought, you know what I, what I really, what I really was looking for, and I never really articulated this till tonight. I, I was really looking for what I would have called the real deal. I just kept being convinced I was being, there, something wasn't right. And, and to get the real deal in Pentecostal circles, it all had to do with the emotional experience of the Holy Ghost. And so... I chased emotional experiences of the Holy Ghost. I would get filled with the Spirit, speak with other tongues, operate in the gifts. And I'd come off the high, down back into the valley, and I'd go, i got to have more. So I, we, we chased revivals and camp meetings and conferences and seminars and prayer lines. and I mean, all of it because we were always looking to appease the need for the real deal. You know, I, I had this, and here's what I didn't understand. I was right. That was the Holy Spirit in me saying, son, there is a substance. You just keep chasing shadows. But I, it took me years to realize I was a shadow hunter. All I was really doing was going after the latest shadow. And I started, and this is what will happen naturally. When you go shadow hunting, you'll go find the biggest body that you can so that it casts the biggest shadow. This is why people feel safer in a big place, big denomination, follow a big name. I'm going to go find big so-and-so. they got to be doing something right. They wouldn't be running 30,000 and wrote four bestsellers and doing meetings all over the world. I'll just fall down in their shadow. How many of you tried that and then they fell over on you? We did. I, we followed one of the biggest Pentecostal ministries in the world when I was a kid growing up. And by followed, I mean watched religiously, bought all the materials, went to all the meetings. This guy went on the road. We went and found him. You know, I, I don't have to say any names. It wouldn't do any good because if you get your eyes on a body, they're all going to fall over on you anyway. It's not going to matter what label you lay across it. I remember when that body fell over on us, about killed us. It about killed us. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being funny. I'm serious. I mean, we would rather have died than face that day. Given the opportunity, we just said, I'd rather God killed me yesterday than have to go through what we're going through today with brother so-and-so not being who we thought he was. Because when you're chasing the shadow, chasing the experience, you're going to have to end up sometime meeting the body. So you're either going to meet the one that falls on you or the Holy Spirit, and this is what I'm believing is happening right now in the message of grace. The Holy Spirit, the body, is whispering into that darkness. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I'm going I'm to show you. I love that message translation. I'm going to show you how to take a real rest. See, what you've been doing is fake rest. And what it does is it appears like it's wise with self-imposed religion, false humility, neglect the body. But how many of you are getting better? Since you're not getting better, it's not doing anything in the indulgence of your flesh. You're chasing victory instead of living from it. The first time I ever heard anyone say that phrase, I thought, man, they are nuts. That doesn't even make sense. When I heard the phrase, we don't chase liberty, we live from it. We don't chase victory, we live from liberty. I thought that doesn't make any sense. How can you live from victory? That's because I was living a life in the shadow.